Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nantara Rai. Today we have traveled 70 kilometers from New Delhi to Buland Share in Uttar Pradesh. We are here to interview Roshni Nadar Malhotra. She's the only child of Shiv Nadar. She's the CEO of ATL Corporation and the chairperson of Vidya Gyan. Vidya Gyan is a boarding school for the underprivileged. Thanks, Roshni, for joining us here on ET Now. You know, you've built this fantastic school with such a fantastic message in partnership with the government of Uttar Pradesh. I think you've had one batch that has already passed out of class 12. You could have literally done anything in this world. Why education? I think it was um, a very exciting initiative when we thought about it, which was in 2008. And, um, you know, firstly, we, we literally live right next to Uttar Pradesh. We work in Noida and Uttar Pradesh is the most populous state in the country. I think on a lot of metrics, perhaps the most underserved when it comes to mm. education, especially school education. And um, I mean, I just thought it was really exciting. It was like, you know, my own entrepreneurial venture, so to speak. At the same time, you know, we did get support from the Uttar Pradesh government to help us with the um, admissions process and the selection process, but of course the entire school is fully funded and supported by the Shivnada Foundation. It was really exciting because what we're doing with the children here is we're not making them literate. We're hoping to, um, in the future, make them like you and me, <laughs> which is, you know, leaders in whatever field that we choose to be in. And that's a pretty exciting and challenging task. So here we are. So for the benefit of our viewers who may not know, uh, this is a school uh, that, you know, I think the children's parents cannot have an income, a double income of more than one lakh rupees. There's an entrance test uh, that is taken place that goes all across all the 75 districts and that's how you select them, right? How difficult is that to have that entrance exam? We have a two-prong examination and uh, just to give you numbers, last year we had two lakh students that sat for the examination. And out of the two lakh, we chose 200. Wow. And it takes us six months to do it. And uh, that's where the MOU with the UP government kicks in because they help us facilitate the examination at different government schools, different districts. And um, we have a mass based test. And after that, we have a much more um, focused test that um, tests their cognitive ability. Because if I were to try to test their literacy, sometimes you may not get the diamonds in the rough. Yeah. But whether you're thinking in English or you're thinking in Hindi, if you're bright, you're bright. Yeah. You know, and uh, this truly is a leadership academy. It's not uh, just an education institution for the masses. That's why, you know, it's like, I think 0.01% or 001%. And, um, and the, again, just the vision of the school is that um, one day, hopefully in our lifetimes, if not after, um, maybe one of our students here will become a Prime Minister of India. Oh, is that, is that what you tell them and when you talk to them yeah. as well, that anything is possible? Anything is possible, yeah. And, you know, you've had one batch that has passed out. Um, did they get good placements in college? So the topper of our batch, Shikha, she's at LSR doing okay. psychology. Oh, I went to LSR. Yes. Our second topper, Vaishali, she's at University of Massachusetts. Oh, wow. With a, um, a, with, with a um, partial scholarship. Mm -hmm. So partially we are supporting it. And uh, the third topper, Sumit, is at uh, NIT Rotak. Oh, wow. And uh, Mehul is at, I think, NIT, another NIT. I'm not sure which one. And so there are lots of, uh, you know, examples. Mm -hmm. And this year also, you know, um, the American admission uh, decisions are coming in. So one of our other girls, Manbi, she's also gotten into University of Massachusetts. So she's, you have two of them there now? Manbi hasn't gone yet. Okay. Uh, she will go uh, now. Mm. So I think the aim is to get as many people out into the global world as possible, as many students. Because I think that's really where they'll get that, you know, that leadership 
development unless they make it to the top universities in our country which in DUI or mm -hmm. SRCC mm -hmm. or LSR yeah. or the Stephen, crazy cutoffs I'm very glad the I went to college when I yes. did because I could go to college yes, that yes. so I so it's really mm -hmm. funny I always laugh with the Vidya Gyan students and tell them and the same thing with us also mm -hmm. that we actually mm -hmm. had a higher chance of getting into an American university yeah. even with a you know, like a really good 89% mm -hmm. as opposed to any of the Indian universities because you wouldn't make it. But that right. doesn't mean you're not good. Correct. You're really good. So you're doing this whole all-round education, yes. clearly. Yes. And also again, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, when the kids come here, everything is taken care of financially? Yes. Everything is provided for. Uh, they don't, uh, the families are not expected to really um, provide even, uh, you know, like one rupee of uh, financial support. What they are expected to do, and which they do actually amazingly for being, you know, from an underprivileged background, and um, is that they come for every parent-teacher meeting. And so how often they, is that? Uh, three times a year. That's and you have what, 4,200 uh, students between the two schools? Eventually. 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 Right, right now we have around uh, 1,000. 1,300 students between both the schools. So one is in Sitapur near Lucknow, and um, so both over here we've had one batch graduate out of class 12. We are on our second batch this year and in Sitapur the first batch is graduating this year. Okay, so do you have plans for more schools in the no. Pradesh? So when you, okay, so no plans as no. of now, so you're going to focus on these two? Yeah, because like I said, they're leadership academies and I mean if you look at the campus. It's amazing. It's, yeah. you know, it's um, the kind of school that I would not hesitate to send my children and um, it also takes a lot of time and Correct. money <laughs> to build a school <laughs> like this. No, I'm sure it does. You know, and, uh, it's, and clearly you spend a lot of money yeah. and time and effort. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, it's a challenge everywhere, right? It's not just uh, to Vidya Gyan, but finding really good teachers mm -hmm. is a that is, overall yeah. a deficit. A, a challenge. And uh, I think more and more as schools are opening up in urban India, actually a lot of teachers are also pref preferring to be in cities as opposed to be in boarding schools. Correct. So, you know, finding good teachers is another is really like the heart of every school so if we don't get that model right mm. you know we have so how did you come upon this idea of uh, this um you know i actually didn't come upon it so i can't give myself credit <laughs> um, um one of our trustees of the foundation used to be mr tsr subramaniam mm -hmm. and uh, then of course uh, my father and um, they really uh, they both uh, uh, two million hmm. but you know he was obviously you know top of his class in the UP cadre and then went on to become cabinet yeah. secretary of India you know my father's two million but basically made his life in Uttar Pradesh because HCLs in Noida so it was just like one of those conversations that we have to give back to Uttar Pradesh <laughs> okay. you know it was like one of those things but like I think a lot of people when they talk about giving back especially in education including ourselves as well there's always a lot more focus on higher education right and I think really the the heart of India and the power of India is going to be if we are able to get our primary and secondary education sorted. That is later, the you higher know, education. Yeah, I mean they have to, they won't make it to higher education if you don't fix do the yeah. primary and secondary. So that's really where the idea came upon from. And you know besides uh, just the amount of time that must have been spent into building this, like I said a lot of money must have been spent as well. Can you give us any idea? We spent... Uh, uh, we spent 100 crores for campus. Wow. And, and that's when you guys had divested your shares, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that was part, part, mostly was to support the capital expenditure at Shivnada Foundation. So the Vidya Gyan campuses and then the Shivnada University, which is just 35-40 mm. minutes from here. So that's 300 acres. So, uh, you know, it, um, and uh, this, this school was built in phases. So this was 2009, but we completed it maybe a year and a half ago. So different buildings came Correct, up as yeah. The classes got added. And I mean, just to give you a scale, um, a Vidya Gyan student joins us in class 6 and they graduate um, in class 12. So they stay with us 7 years. And on average, per student, we spend 20 lakhs. 20 lakhs? Per student. Okay. For the time that they're with us. Because so they do keep, a lot. So you have to keep sustaining that. So how yeah. does it work? Shimnata Foundation. So you think you might have to keep divesting your shares in HCL no, for that? No, or you're done? No, yeah, that was, a, that was a one time. And that was also because we had made that commitment to the foundation. And at that time, you know, we also had to acquire the Shimnata um, University land. And there was hmm. a huge uh, 
neat, but right now it's fine. And see, now that the capex has built, hmm. then it's just an operating Correct. model. You know, hmm. we're not, we don't need to build no, the campus anymore. No, because 20 any. lakh per student, you've yeah. got about a thousand kids. You eventually yeah. want to have 4,200. That's why. Yeah, but but I think we'll be able to manage that. I think one of the one of the great things that started happening in Vidya Gyan as of last two years ago is that you know we've been trying to do a bit of fundraising outside okay. because it's. It's really like these are these are children of the state, and you know they don't belong to me. They don't belong to anybody else. And if somebody else, you know, wants to sponsor a Vidya Gyan scholar, hmm. because they'll go on to do great things, much like any other school Correct. or university. Yeah. Like we're open to that. So you know, um, HDFC has been very generous, okay. and you know we've been just talking to State Bank of India, and you know, and uh, so what do they do? They give grants. They give uh, scholarships. Scholarships. They do okay. give scholarships for some of the kids for higher education as well. So, so you know, we from HDFC, uh, we got six crores, okay. and that was for their higher education. So, children when they go to DU or they go mm. to everywhere, and you know, so really supporting them when they go f Correct. forward. So, okay. you're you're happy with the way the kids are turning out to be. And yeah. you know, before we head into a commercial break, you sure. spoke about giving back. Now, the person who made I think giving back very popular, at least in our time, has been Warren Buffett. And uh, Bill G and Melinda Gates, and your father's name always comes up when you know they visit India. But how Shiv Nader is kind of spearheading it in India. Are you? I'm guessing very inspired by all of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I think uh, you know one of the focuses that the Shiv Nader Foundation has had. I mean, I'm sure you've already read about this is building of institutions. That's really what we're doing. So whether it's the Vidya Gyan schools, whether it's the Shiv Nader University, SSN in the south. Or you know, at some point, the Kiranada Museum of Art, or mm. you know, the whole, or Shivnada schools. The whole idea has been to create institutions for India. So, I should hope that these institutions last much longer than any of our yeah. lifetimes, because otherwise, it would have been all in you know, in vain. In vain. Right on that note, we'll take a short commercial break. Stay tuned. We'll be back in less than two minutes. We're in conversation with Roshni Nadir Malhotra. Welcome back to this ET Now special. Today we're coming to you from Vidya Gyan in Bulansher in Uttar Pradesh. I'm in conversation with Roshni Nader Malhotra. Hi Roshni, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the school that we're coming from. It's such a beautiful thought. You're truly a social entrepreneur. But tell me a bit about your experience, you know, because you have, you, I mean, you people have to go out into the districts. You have to convince the parents to send their kids to a boarding school, the girls are going to be staying with the boys. How difficult has it been? Actually, one of the questions that they have was not how girls and boys will stay. One of the first questions that uh, all the parents had when we launched Vidya Gyan was that uh, sab kuch free hai, dal mein kuch kala hai. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they that, couldn't believe it. Yeah, they could not believe it. And I think, uh, you know, because we were able to put into place a really good, rigorous testing system. So a lot of the positioning around getting those kind of children and getting those parents in was, it's not free because the student still has to earn his or her right to be at Vidya Gyan. Broadband uh, being an issue here, but just to understand where you think education is headed, are we far off from uh, technology being integrated with education? I think we're very far off. And the reason I think we're very far off actually has nothing to do with broadband. I think um, the biggest uh, gap is the training piece. Training of educators, training of teachers, even training of uh, you know, chief technology officers for schools and education. They don't exist today. So you can put a smart board in a class, uh, but how much of that is really being absorbed by the child? And then the other gap is obviously the evaluation piece. Correct. So you can put as much technology in the class. I mean, I don't think that it's going to, it can supplement, but it cannot uh, take the role of the teacher, especially not in rural India. So is our education system then creating a bigger disparity between rural India and urban India? Absolutely, absolutely. There is a bigger gap because um, the all the new schools are also only opening in urban India, right? Yeah. I mean, Vidya Gyan aside, but this is a unique initiative. Suppose you remove this, like no one's really coming to rural India. 
But then where does that leave, for example, the Prime Minister's ambitions of a skill India or a digital India? So skilling is different. Mm. But the thing is, would a I know that doesn't come yeah. technically yeah. under this yeah. age bracket, but yeah. these are the dreams that we are... No, so I think that's fantastic. So, for example, even some of our Vidya Gyan children, I'll be honest with you, our first batch that graduated, not everybody's gone to university. Some of them have enrolled into coaching. Mm. Some of them have gone into this skilling, vocational training, yeah. courses or whatever, because it will lead it would lead to employment, hmm. which is also very, very essential. Because like I said, the yeah. premise for Vidya Gyan first is that we are able to prepare the children for real world. Real world means employment. Correct. You know, you get, how do you break out of the poverty cycle? Hmm. You know, so I think that's very important. And I think that's very, very critical. But you can't skill in school. Just throwing them out into the real world, exactly. hopefully, like you said, to compete with people like you and me. Yeah, absolutely. And so the thing is, the only way they can compete with people like you and me is if I'm, if we make sure they get what you and I got. Hmm. Yeah. That's where the 20 lakhs comes in. <laughs> you know, whether it's foreign exchange programs or whether it's, you know, like different uh, competitions or different exposure that they can get even within India. That's hmm. really where that goes into. So you send them into. for all these... Uh... They go a lot, a lot. So uh, our uh, Vidya Gyan students, especially when they get on the higher, higher... Um, um, classes. Uh, so a lot of these athletic meets that take place in Delhi with a lot of top schools, a lot of your Olympiads and science quizzes and this and that. We've had uh, two, three students from last year and I think this year as well who are those NTSE scholars. Mm. So they tend to also uh, get a lot of uh, um, opportunities. And then um, every year for the past uh, three, four years, we've had students who've been going to Brown every okay. summer for summer exchange programs, um, summer education programs, Lehigh University as well. And, um, you know, we tied up with um, um, the TGELF and uh, the Kemka Foundation, and they run a program uh, with, I think, the American Embassy, but it's called the Kennedy Luger Scholarship, the Youth Exchange Program. And uh, it's been three years now, and Every year, we send two Vidya Gyan students. They go to the U.S., stay with an American family for a full one year. Okay, wow. Attend high school over there. And, you know, and then when they come back, they just transform. What were the experiences like? Amazing. And I do think. you also have any program where they could uh, perhaps get uh, later on in life a job at HCL? So what uh, we do is that, uh, obviously, it's purely based on merit. Merit, yes, of course. But uh, one of the things that I've been positioning with the students is that, you know, one of the biggest paucities in India is teachers. And between the Shivnada University, uh, the Shivnada schools, Vidya Gyan, I mean, we have like nursery to PhD covered, you <laughs> yes. know? And so I always tell them that there's always an opportunity for you to come back and be a teacher, hmm. come back and be a professor. I mean, one day you might even come back and be the principal of the school. I mean, So do you pay your teachers well? Of course, of course. And they all live on campus. Those are their... Uh, apartment uh, buildings and no, I say this because teachers are not usually yeah. paid well. No, well, I mean, we have to because firstly getting really good teachers to come and stay in Bulanshire, which is like not even the heart of UP. So let's talk about Sitapur <laughs> for a second. It's not easy, you know, and um, we, pay for, we pay for all their children's education. So if they make it through merit at Vidya Gyan, they're more than happy to study here. But a lot of them are sending their children, let's say, to DPS Greater Noida. I think we make it compelling enough for them to really... Do not uh, say no. Do not say no. And on that note, I'm going to take a short commercial break, Roshni. We'll be back in less than two minutes. Welcome back to this ET Now special. I'm in conversation with Roshni Nadir Malhotra. Roshni, you know, we've spoken about the school. Now can I talk about Roshni, the entrepreneur? My first question is, would you, would you want your legacy to be more of a social entrepreneur or of a cutthroat entrepreneur? I think I'd like my legacy to be of a really cutthroat social entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if I could just talk to Roshni, the entrepreneur now. You inherited such a fantastic company, the CEO of HCL. Do you want to share us a bit about where you want to take it, what your dreams are, what you're working towards? So I'm the... Uh, the CEO of HCL Corporation, hmm. which is the private holding company. So um, let's not confuse it with no, HCL obviously. Technologies and HCL Infosystems. And really the strategic direction for HCL Corporation going forward for many years to come is um, not just um, you know, strengthening the position we have in the current technology companies, but 
you know, as you had asked me earlier as well, that for the first time after 40 years, we forayed into healthcare yeah. with HCL Healthcare, which is again a private company, so it's not even a public listed company. Or, you know, we had looked at uh, HCL Talent Care with, you know, uh, skill development as a uh, you know, business to get into, or uh, there might be many more opportunities and avenues we, uh, you know, come to. So I think with time, uh, I hope, uh, HCL also takes on um, much more of a structure and a role um, as a conglomerate. So if I were to just compare it to the Tatas where they have multiple industries mm. that they are in, you know, so as HCL also grows, because it is a holding company and it is a family company, and uh, you know, we do have uh, a pretty large balance sheet which we can leverage for unique opportunities. So I think that's really where one strategically uh, sees it going. How do you react when you read all these stories these days about these various uh, multinational companies that want to enter India and they talk about technology-based education and how things are going to be done on tablets? You feel that we're still very far off from it. You did mention that, but I'm sure they approach you. Uh, so what do you tell them? And you know, what kind I, of engagement do you I mean, have? They, they have probably approached us for a lot of our urban initiatives. For let's, so let's say for the Shivnada University or the SSN College of Engineering or Shivnada schools. But, uh, you know, Vidya Gyan is really rural, like structurally very rural. rural. So it's, it's tougher, uh, you know, to crack. I mean, I'd love for all our kids to have tablets and just generally be technology savvy. But kids today, I mean, you know, they'll, they'll pick it up so quickly. You know, and like I said, yeah, three-year-olds can take selfies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and having said that, these children, uh, how do you define technology? Because whether you know you're in, uh, even if you're in the rural India uh, countries of India, they may not know how to read and write, but they know how to function a smartphone. <laughs> yeah. You know, like whether it's the selfies or whether it's the apps or whatever you may say. So I think what would be really exciting is how quickly education can actually move to those devices. Because that's something they already yeah. have in their hand, as opposed to an iPad or a tablet. Do you, you think know? the CBSC, the actual board, is uh, in sync with today's times? So I think uh, it's not just CBSC. If, even if you look at the university curriculum, you know, um, there. Why do we keep talking about skilling? Because why? Because there is a gap. There is a very recognizable gap. You know, we. Uh, represent industry as well as most other people do um, you know and we know that there are so many lacks of engineers for example if you just look at uh, IT coming out into uh, um, the world but not getting hired you know because they're not trained for the kind of job that industry requires so I I, I, I think that there has to be a lot more collaboration, not just with UGC or AICTE or whatever your um, higher education bodies are, as well as your school bodies, CBSC, um, ICSC or whatever board, to work a lot more with um, uh, industry to say that how do we really get our students to that mark. You must be getting a lot of phone calls around school admission time. How do you deal with all of you that? Know, honestly, not that much. Uh, it's only for Shivnada school. Obviously, yeah. Vidya Gyan is not yeah. possible. But um, it's um, it's not <laughs> been so bad so far. <laughs> you don't have a different number during the school admission time? No, no, not, no, not yet. I think it's also maybe because Shivnada school is just four or five years old. Why? Well, I heard, uh, the, you know, people apply so much that the first few seconds the servers can't handle it. It happened. It happened the first year with Shivnada school. But it was really funny because this year, um, my son is going to be going to Shivnada school, Noida. So, um, uh, so I um, did the full application online as well. And it was really funny because it's like to the count of like 8.31 a.m. I was online and registering Arman and everything. And it was really cool because like they told me I was the third parent out of like <laughs> couple of thousand parents who managed to get through the system. <laughs> so my experience was it was great. While we were chatting off camera, you said you're happy but not totally happy as yet with Vidya Gan. What will make you very happy? I think what will make me really happy is that if every single student of every single batch of Vidya Gyan, um, like gets into like the best universities. Yeah. And that's not happing. Right now, I have to be honest, it's 20% 20, 20 of the class. The other students also get into universities but not there. 
And before I conclude the interview, since we are a business news channel, obsessed, obsessed with the stock markets and money, etc., for all the plans that you have, I'm just once again going to ask you, as of now, no plans to dilute any shareholding? No, not at all. Because that was uh, something that everybody's been watching out for, I think, after the 2% dilution. But I mean, when ago. we did that, at that time, we had also announced that it was those 5.6 million shares specifically for the Shibnada Foundation, which mm. we yeah. plowed back into the foundation and is probably already spent. Between, That's what I'm saying. Do, you you know, don't need more. No, so uh, no plans at all. And um, yeah, we're here to stay with HCL. Thank you so much for hosting us Thank here you. at Vidya Kyan and giving us all your time. Thank you. Thank you. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash etnow.